Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons. I'm doing this video to teach you about the building blocks of a program written in the C-sharp programming language. I'm doing this video for my CAD tech, Austin. Uh, so I've already done some videos where we're writing some code in C-sharp to implement what's called a triple store database. So I'll try and link to the first video in that, in that set of videos uh, in the description here on YouTube. But I wanted to give Austin kind of a high, higher level overview of, a little, you know, tell him a little bit about the C-sharp programming language and also tell him, you know, kind of what, what are we at when we're in there writing code to define classes in C-sharp, why are we doing that? What kind of what, what's the relationship to a class and, and the building blocks of a C-sharp program that actually run on your computer? Okay, so the C-sharp C -sharp programming language, so the, the, this is pronounced sharp, but that's how it's written, so C-sharp programming language is a language that was invented by the folks at Microsoft and it's now uh, maintained by the .NET Foundation but Microsoft you know supports it in a lot of different ways and so different types of programming languages have different types of features uh, and bugs so uh, there's trade-offs there that you got to make in the design of, of any programming language so C sharp is what we call statically typed so it has static types what does that mean that means anytime you create a value uh, in, in a C-sharp program, so you want to assign a value to a, to a label, to a variable is what we call it. You have to tell the, the program, you have to tell your C-sharp code what kind of value you're going to store. So if I say I've got a bucket, a, a bucket in the computer that I want to store a value in, the bucket is named dozen. That's the name of my bucket, dozen. And I'm going to store a value in there. Let's say I'm going to store, store the value 1, 2, 12. Okay, I have to tell C sharp this bucket is to store whole numbers. Okay, they're called integers in C sharp. Okay, or if I want to store in that same bucket dozen, I want to store a string of characters D O Z E N, the word dozen, then I have to tell C sharp in this bucket, this data bucket that I'm creating named dozen, I want to store the word dozen. So it's statically typed. Every time you store a value in a variable, in a bucket, in the code, you have to tell the code what type of variable you're storing. It's called statically typed. Okay, other languages like Python or Ruby, you don't do that. You just say, here's a variable, dozen, stuff this value in it. And the, the actual, uh, what they call the interpreter that runs those languages, Python or Ruby, actually figures out on its own what kind of value you're putting in it. Okay, but that is not how C-sharp works. It's statically typed. Okay, that means it's a little more work to write the code. Uh, but it's also what, what we call, it's a little more resilient, it's a little more robust, it's a little more safe. So you have fewer errors when you actually execute. It's harder to write the code, but when you execute the code, there's typically fewer errors because it's statically typed. So there's a trade-off there between efficiency and ease of use and safety, okay? C-sharp lands on the safe side. It's compiled to what we call bytecode. So they take your C-sharp code, you run it through what's called a compiler, and it puts out a bunch of these numerical instructions called bytecode. Okay, what that means is <clears throat> the computer doesn't understand words in English. It, it uses numbers, right? It translates numbers into uh, electrical commands, basically, in, in the silicone. Okay, and so bytecode is, is a lot closer to the number, the numerical instructions the computer understands in English. And so what this means is your code runs faster. Okay, now again, there's a trade-off. In a language like Python or Ruby, you don't have to compile to bytecode, so this is an extra step. But in, in what they call an interpretive language, like Python or Ruby, your code runs a little bit slower because it, it's not as close to the machine language that a computer understands natively, whereas C-sharp gets pretty close because it's compiled to bytecode. Okay? The next level under bytecode, by the way, if you're wondering, is like assembly language or what, what they call machine code. Okay, C-sharp runs anywhere you have the .NET platform. Okay, so the .NET platform is just a package of, it's, a, it's a, a group or a package of tools and software libraries that allow C-sharp programs to run. So C-sharp is what we call cross-platform. So it runs on more than one kind of computer architecture. Okay, so it'll run on Windows computers, Linux computers, and your Android cell phone. So it's called cross-platform. Any platform that somebody builds the, the, any architecture that somebody builds the .NET platform on, the C-sharp language will run on it with, with some caveats, okay? And then uh, a C-sharp language, so if, if you kind of want to sum up, it's, it's structured, right? It has static types, it's very structured, okay? It's very powerful, it's a powerful programming language. 
Um, and it's got about a medium difficulty to learn, okay? So it's not the easiest programming language to learn, but it's not the hardest. So I would say, you know, kind of ease, it, if you have a, 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 a spectrum or a graph, and these are easy programming languages, okay, down here, these are easy. And then we go down to hard, hard programming languages, okay? You know, I would put down here on the easy is going to be like Python or Ruby. Okay. Then kind of next level of difficulty over, I would put Java, C Sharp, okay, maybe Auto Lisp, some kind of Lisp language. Okay, then over here we have languages like C or C++. Those are really hard. They're a nightmare. You got to do your own memory management and deal with pointers and stuff like that that's really crazy hard okay and then uh finally over here is like yeah if you want to write code in assembly language like you're a rock star right like that is really hard to do right you basically think got to think like a computer okay so java c sharp kind of right in here right so not the hardest towards the easy end but there's easier languages to learn you know if you're going to start out with your first programming language it might be better to learn Python or Ruby. I really like Python. By the way, there's a type of Python that runs on the .NET platform, just like C Sharp. It's called Iron Python. There are other languages that run on the .NET pl platform. There's Visual Basic .NET. There's something called F Sharp. I don't know if that's maintained anymore, uh, but it might be. There's some, some cool languages that got invented and then just kind of died, like Boo, B-O-O, -O, Boo, used to run on the .NET platform, but most folks that are writing in .NET now are writing in C Sharp. So what are the building blocks of a C-sharp program? Okay, so in a C-sharp program, you have a special method called the main method. That's the method or the function that's called by the operating system to start your program. Okay, it's called the main method. So it's the startup. So it starts your program. And then what your program does is it creates objects. And then it does stuff with those objects it creates. Okay, so what is an object? An object... You know, what is this? What do I mean when I say an object? What do I mean? An object is just a collection of data and methods. Collection of data and methods given a name. Okay, methods given a name in your program and a type. And a type. Okay, and I'm going to give you an example of that in just a minute. Okay, and then when I say do stuff with objects, does your program does stuff with objects, what do I mean? Well, it, it, it manipulates objects, it manipulates data. If we weren't trying to manipulate data, we wouldn't have a program to begin with. Now, in C Sharp, when it creates the objects, this is important, it uses what's called a class. So a class is a template that's used to create an object. So class is just a template, it's a fancy word for a template. Okay. So when we actually go into Visual Studio, which is a, a tool to help you write programs in C Sharp, when you go into Visual Studio and you're actually writing code, you're, you're defining classes. Classes are the fundamental building block of a C Sharp program. A class is a template that your program uses to create objects, and that's what C Sharp programs do. They create objects. Okay, Create objects and then do stuff with them. Now, let's talk about What's an object? Now, a lot of times when you're studying object-oriented programming, because that's what C Sharp is, it's an object-oriented programming language. When you're studying a object-oriented programming, and I'll try and find some good links on the on the on YouTube, and we'll we'll try and link to some videos that explain object-oriented programming in the description. But you know, when they when they go to teach an example of an object, they'll use like a car or a dog or you know. I don't know. The examples don't make sense to me. So to me, it makes a lot more sense to, to use an example of an object, something that you might actually have in a, in a computer that you, that you might want to represent as part of a, a, of a program in a computer. So let's just say we want to represent a color in our program. Okay, so we've got a, a foot photography software or graphic design software or CAD software. We need to represent a color. Okay, so let's just think about how we would define a color. Okay. Now, I know just from my work in graphic design that you can represent a color with three values, a red value, a green value, and a blue value. So you can use those three primary colors, red, green, and blue, to represent tens of thousands of colors. Okay, And just the way computers are made, usually those colors have to be a number between 1 and 255. Okay, That just has to do with binary systems, base 2 systems. 
Okay. So we can take these three numbers between 0 and 255, and we can represent a color with them, right? So for example, 0, 0, 0 is black. 255, 255, 255 is white. Okay, so we can represent many thousands of colors on a computer with three numbers. Okay, so let's talk about how would we create a class that would represent a color in our program. Well, we know we need to store three numbers, right? We need to store a red value, a green value, and a blue value. Okay, a lot of, a lot of times you also want to store an alpha value, which is just how transparent your color is. Okay, is it, is it clear or is it opaque? Is it transparent or is it opaque? Same thing, 0 to 255. Okay, so we got four numbers that we want to use to store our color. Now, when you define your class in C Sharp, okay, I'm going to just teach you about three things. I'm going to teach you about private variables, properties, and then methods. Okay, so private vari variables are little pieces of data you want inside your object that you don't want people outside your object to be able to see. And sometimes there's some really good reasons for that. So in this particular case, I would use an int or an integer to store my red, green, and blue values and my alpha. Okay, but these are going to be private variables. So outside of my object, you aren't going to be able to see them private. Okay, now, if everything in your class is private, it doesn't do anybody any good. Like the only reason to create a class is to have something that other objects can, can do stuff with, right? So I'm going to make a property, what we call a property in C Sharp, and I'm going to call it, it's going to be a string. And that string, so string is just a piece of text. Okay, this is going to be a property. Okay, so a property is a piece of data that you can see from outside the class. So it's just like a private member variable, only it's exposed to other objects. It's public, we call it public. Okay, so I'm gonna make a string property and that's gonna have the red, green, blue value as a, as a text string. So here's how black would look, zero, zero, zero. Okay, here's how white would look, 255, 255, 255, okay. So I would store my color internally with these three, four, four private variables, but I'm exposing it through my class as a string, okay? And actually, because we have the alpha, the, the color white, if it was completely opaque, there'd be four numbers in our string, okay, in our string of text characters. So it'd look like this. Okay, this is the red, the green, the blue, and the alpha. Okay, and we would calculate this string from our internal, from our private variables that, that nobody else can see. Okay, now, we talked about a method. So a method allows you to do something with the data that's in an object. Okay, so let's just say we had a method on our class. Okay, and we want a method to just lighten the color, make it closer to white. Okay, now usually in object-oriented programming languages, you represent a method with two parentheses. This means this is a, this is a lengthen is a method, it does something here. All right, and the reason they use parentheses is you can pass information to a method inside the parentheses, okay? We might also have a darken. A darken method, right? So that's gonna manipulate these values inside to make the color lighter or darker, okay? So that's just an example of, of what an object might, might look like, a color object, okay? Now let's just, let me give you another example. Let's say we wanna represent a page, like a sheet of paper. Okay, in our, in our program, maybe it's a drawing program, a CAD program, or graphic design, we just want to represent a sheet. Okay, well, what might I want, what might I want to know? What might I want to store in my class? Okay, so I'm going to want the width of my page. Okay, now I'm going to use a double for that. Okay, a double is just a number with a decimal. Okay, and actually I can't remember in C Sharp, it might be called decimal, I can't remember, but we'll go with double for now. Okay, double, I'm going to say double width. Okay, double page or sub, du double height. Okay, then I'm going to have double margin. So we want to define a margin. So we don't want to draw outside the margin. Okay, and then uh, maybe I want to give my sheet of paper a color, a background color. So I'm going to say uh, uh, color. So we're going to use our color object from before, color background. Okay, so now I've got these. Okay, now these could be private member variables or we could expose them as properties, public properties. Okay, so let's just, for our example, we'll say these are public properties. Now, 
what kind of methods would, would we want on a, on a sheet object? Okay, well, maybe you want a method that's resize. So we want to resize our sheet. Okay, or we want to increase the margin. We want a method that increases the margin. Okay, now there's an example of a, of a method that might take a value. So increase the margin and it's going to take a double. I'm running out of room here, sorry. Increase the margin to, and it needs a double to know how much to increase it by. Increase margin. Okay, and we can have another method, de decrease margin, right? Another method to lighten or darken the background color. Okay, so you guys kind of get the idea, I hope. Uh, class is just a template to make an object, an object we use to represent data in a computer. A page, a color, a line, a piece of text, a font, whatever it is, right? Okay, so just to review, every C Sharp program has a special method. It's called a main method. That's the method the operating system executes to start your C Sharp program. So when you double click on an EXE that you've made in C Sharp, the operating system calls your main method. The main method creates objects and then does stuff with those objects. Classes are the templates that we use to make objects. Objects have data. Data are either private member variables or public properties. And they have methods. Methods do something to the data that's inside of an object. Okay, the last thing I want to teach you is when you get all done writing your C-sharp program, you compile it, right? We talked about that over here. It's a compiled language. You compile it and bundle it up. Okay, and you get to one of two things. If it's just a library, a software library to be used by other programs, it's called a DLL. If, if it's a program that actually gets executed on the computer to do something, it's a .exe. And you guys have seen these, right? You probably run .exes on your Windows computer all the time. All right, so there you go. There's some basics. You know, gives you a rough idea a little bit about the C-sharp programming language and the basic building blocks, blocks of a C-sharp program. I am not an expert C-sharp programmer. I'll be honest, I, I do most of my coding in Java. <laughs> so Java and C-sharp are similar, but they are a little bit different. So I've been learning about C-sharp as I, as I prepare these videos for, uh, for Austin. Okay, so I want to do another video and just talk to you a little bit about a triple store database. What is a triple store da database and how does it compare to a regular database? And then why? What's special about our triple store database that we're, that we're going to build? Okay. So I appreciate you guys watching. If you're on YouTube and you like these videos, hit subscribe. We're going we're gonna to record a video all the way through the implementation of this triple store program, which is going to be released under open source license. Uh, it's going to have some cool tools in it. Uh, I'm excited about the software. I'm excited that, that Austin's going to be learning this. Hopefully some other folks will see this video and, and, and be able to learn a little programming too. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next round.